Okay. Um, today, we we'll talk about openings. Uh, the club would be quieter than usual because uh, there's no one here. So I thought I will make it short by talking about one of my favorite openings for beginners. It's called the Ray Lopez. Uh, it's named uh, after a, a priest by the same name and some other uh, places out there they will call it the Spanish games. Now why do I think um, beginners should play the Ray Lopez? It's very safe. It builds upon um, the previous uh, ideas we have talked about like development and castling and and um, it's actually one of the secret weapons of uh, the olden days grandmaster. Now there's a Russian grandmaster in the 20th century, you guys have never heard of, uh, Anthony Karpov. He's, he's what we call a positional player. He doesn't win like Morphy does, Atsi, Fatsi style. He, he develops and then slowly builds up pressure and uh, one thing he's very good at is he doesn't let you do what you want to do. Your pieces can't move, you can't do anything and end of the day he will just slowly move around and does boring stuff. Okay, so we'll look at the a Ray Lopez. Okay, always begins with e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, and then bishop b5. Now this is the Ray Lopez. It all starts from this position. What's the idea here? The idea here is a, the knight would take, be taken by the bishop, and then you take the you take the pawn at uh, e5. But it's not exactly possible because once you take it, let's uh, play a random move. Once you take it, take back. We have queen e7. It's hard to defend both your knight and the pawn at the same time. So it, it's, it's not exactly a, the idea of the railroad pass. Now the main idea is actually to double up your opponent's pawn and castle it. And then you're going to have a, a much better time than your opponent. But generally, this is one of the most um, theoretical. Most uh, people have played it often and they have created lines all the way to 30 moves. So that's like 30 moves for white, 30 moves for black, 60 combined together. Okay, now uh, I'll show you two things that the uh, Ray Lopez you can do with, but not to the end. I'll demonstrate with the two games. Uh, this is the first game with uh, Anthony Karpov and uh, Boris Pesky. Both were world champions, both were Russians. and. Um, they, they were really good at that time. Okay, so we will see what they do. Um, generally, uh, Spassky here sort of uh, thought he understood the opening better than Karpov and tried to uh, beat him at, his, at, at, at Karpov's own game, which is being boring and positional. That's normally not what Spassky is very good at. So we'll see what he does here. Now, like all beginners, as I always say, uh, if you can attack something, you choose to attack something. So let's not. Let's see how it goes. Now, I will recommend the next few moves uh, as a general rule of thumb if you are interested in the Ray Lopez. Okay. You bring your bishop back, and then you play both sides play normally, attacking the pawn, Newcastle. Sometimes offering the pawn is okay because you get space afterwards. She's moving two pieces at the same time. Okay, so let's see what he does. He attacks your bishop again. And then both of you develop a few times. Okay, the move c3 is very important because if, say, black threatens your bishop with knight, a5, you can always move the bishop back. Right, that's the whole point of c3. You want to keep your bishops because generally uh, bishops are better than knights and uh, sooner or later you will start to break from the center and then your bishops can aim at the king's diagonal. Alright, so let's see. 
Okay. Uh, few more moves. Now this is the sort of what uh, Anthony Carpo loves to do with his knife. Um, you will do this knight maneuver, then bring your knight to g3. And that's usually a pretty uh, nice even game for you. And we shall see a few more moves. Okay, so now this position is usually what we call the middle game. And you can see both sides can't really do anything with their pieces. There really isn't any way the bishop can move out. The knights can't really go anywhere or threaten anything. So this is something what we would call positional play, whereby you don't necessarily sack all your pieces to get an advantage. You slowly, slowly wait it out, and then if your opponent makes a mistake, you lash out. All right. So this is how you can generally play the uh, Rilo Pass. Now, the Rilo Pass is famous for another thing. It's called the Berlin Defense. Uh, this is considered a drawing weapon. So whenever you have black and you know that your opponent likes to play the Rilo Pass, you can really play a continuation of this move. And um, it, it, it draws. Now, um, this line was sort of popularized in one of the competitions. This is one of the games. Uh, between Gary Kasparov and Kremnik, both were also Grandmaster. Kasparov is a legend. Um, he was many time world champion and feared of. Think of it as like the Magnus Carlsen of uh, 1900s to uh, 2000s. He was really dominating. Um, and Kremnik was number three at that time as well. So very strong players. Um, the story behind this line we are going to see is that Kremnik thought um, he, he's not really going to uh, sort of calculate or be as good at seeing moves as uh, Kasparov. So he thought, I'm going to play as solid and boring as possible, wait it out and get a draw because uh, if you can get a draw, the next next time your piece is going to be white and you most likely have a winning better winning chance if you have white okay so we see the Rui Lopez again six same three move is always the same all right the only difference this time previously you see that they play a6 all right that's the idea uh, the Berlin starts with knight f5 sorry knight f6 the idea is that um, not exactly threatening the pawn, but you are about to move into a drawing move. Okay, so let's say um, white just plays normally castles. You take the pawn, and from here on, um, it seems to be natural what uh, white wants to do. White, white. White has castle, white really want to break open the center as per theory. So you really want to attack that e5 pawn. Alright, you attack it. And the next few move is the main line. You attack your opponent's uh, bishop. Takes, you take. He takes, threatening your knight. You move your knight away. And here you you pretty much forces your opponent to exchange queen, uh, allowing black not to castle, but it actually does nothing here. After the queens are off, uh, white has a slight advantage, but white doesn't have sort of enough active pieces to threaten the black king. So after a few more moves, you see that white really have nothing. Alright, so I'll just walk through the middle game without saying anything. But you can see Kasparov is really trying to do something. And after about here, position is equal. It's sort of like black in the previous situation. Uh, the pieces can't move, can't do anything. There really isn't much uh, white can do. So they played on for a few more moves. 
and afterwards there's nothing to do. You can see that they are moving their pieces back and forth, back and forth. And then they offered uh, a draw, so they agreed to a draw here. Uh, the Berlin is currently now have a reputation of drawing, uh, which is why you don't see many people playing the uh, Rue Lopez anymore, because every Grandmaster will just play the Berlin and then uh, draw the game. Um, so that's all for the Rue Lopez. Um, really try it out. If you're a positional player, you can you do uh, many boring stuff with this uh, opening. If you're more of a set pieces and all that, probably don't go through with this line. But you can learn the Berlin such that when you are black, you don't know what to do when they play E4. You, you could play this against a positional player and they can't really do anything. Okay, so I hope you enjoy. That's all for today.